Speaker, starting from Ben, the federal constituency. Mr. Speaker, honorable colleagues, I'm from God's own state, Abia State. This morning, I rise to commend the President and Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces of the Federal Republic of Nigeria for believing in the sustainability of this our change of the budget calendar from what it was to what it ought to be, which is from January to December. It had so many benefits. That is why we are talking about the budget today. That was why they submitted it on time. Having said that, I want to commend the executive as well for showing the political will in making sure that implementation of the 2020 budget was not just on paper, but in reality. Why do I say so? The analysis at 15th September of this year shows that a commitment from the Federal Republic to all the MDAs was at 1.2 trillion release for capital projects to all the MDAs who can state courageously that they have received 50 percent. Early enough, it has never happened like this in a long while. I also want to commend the federal government for their interest and insistence on agriculture. When the borders were closed and we thought we are all going to die for lack of importation of rice, today the rice farmers have enjoyed this particular support from the federal government. I commend them for that, that our domestic rice has now become very competitive. I also want to commend them for implementing what is known as the Road Infrastructure Tax Credit Scheme. This has helped this Federal Republic to achieve some milestones, one of which is the road called Lokoja, Obajana, Kaba, Elorin Road, the Section 2, Obajana, Kaba, in Kogi, Kwara State, was achieved through this particular implementation of road infrastructure task credit scheme. The same goes for Apapa, Oworoshonki, or Jota Expressway in Lagos State. It was through the implementation of this road infrastructure task credit scheme that they were able to achieve that. Also, the road known as Bodo Boni Road, with bridges across Opopo Channel in River State. This is also because of this implementation of road infrastructure task credit scheme. The willingness of the Federal Republic to prepare and publish what is known as the tax expenditure statement, which has made it difficult for people to understand how much tax incentives that we give out, tax exemption, tax rebates, which is some of the places our revenue of the country has been leaking. This government has insisted that it is going to be published it's going to be prepared and published so that we will know how to mop up revenue from that angle. That demands commendation on the 2020 budget. <laughs> going forward, I like the way they tap the new budget. The new budget says, budget of economic recovery and resilience. And it has the target, four cardinal targets, which is to accelerate economic recovery promote economic diversification, enhance competition, and ensure social inclusion. Very wonderful. And we are able to draw up a good parameters, a, a good sound parameters, where they hinge this budget, which I commend. I commend the $40 per barrel benchmark. I also commend the 1.86 million barrel per day. Although I have to argue that it is important that the Federal Republic of Nigeria make it clear whether or not the 1.86 million barrels per day includes the 300,000 to 400,000 barrels of condescent, 
Is it among the 1.86 billion that they are talking about, or is it excluding the 300,000 and the 400,000 condescent? Because OPEC is always confused when it comes to the computation of this particular aspect. It has to be clear. Mr. Speaker, honorable colleague, the GDP growth rate of 3% is in order. To my own understanding, the foreign exchange rate at 379 naira per dollar is also in good. Inflection at 11.95% is not bad. But look at, let's look at this, which is where I have issues with. Mr. Speaker, when you look at the aggregate expenditure, the available ratio shows that statutory transfer Mr. Speaker, at 484-488-471.273, occupies 3.70%, Mr. Speaker. And that is where the money that is coming to the National Assembly comes from. I will take you back there. Debt services is 25.6%. Mr. Speaker, recurrent expenditure, again, recurrent expenditure, which is at 5.6 billion, it is occupying a humongous 43.19% of the budget, recurrent expenditure. And capital expenditure is occupying 27.55%, which is, which, is, which, is, which is very bad, which is, which is, which is very, very, very poor, Mr. Speaker. Why do I make this emphasis on the recurrent expenditure as well as the capital expenditure and also the statutory a transfer. I say so because the 4319 recurrent expenditure is on the executive. When they say the cost of governance is high, Mr. Speaker, I want to draw the analogy that this high cost of governance is not on the legislative arm. It is on the executive arm. Because we are not part of this 43.19% in recurrent expenditure. We are only occupying 3.70%. And under that 3.07%, Mr. Speaker... Honorable Kenke, Honorable Kenke, are you here? Lower Kenke. And you're running up, Mr. Speaker, I want to say that the high cost of government is on the executive, not on the legislature. And there is the need for them to review that. And there is the need for us to look at our capital. As we consider this budget, the capital expenditure is too low. Because the president said they are going to complete already existing project, we agree. But if you complete already existing project, what, do you, what happens to these new members who are representing constituencies having new challenges? How do they get that captured in the budget? I come from Ben, the federal constituency, and which borders uh, Equano constituency as well as uh, Ohio constituency. We have a road that we cannot use to go home. And we have been pushing for this road to be done. And if this road is not captured in the budget, if there's no fund for it to be uh, taken care of, what do we tell our people that have sent us here? Mr. Speaker, honorable colleagues, I want to uh, bring the attention finally to the ratio. When people complain that Nigerian National Assembly have been having a high amount of money, I want to argue in a different direction. Mr. Speaker, do you know that our percentage in 2019, Mr. Speaker, was 1.42% of the entire budget? In 2020, Mr. Speaker, the National Assembly budget was reduced to 1.18%. And do you know, Mr. Speaker, finally, this yeah, Honorable Ben, let's... Um, one minute. Okay, one minute. Mr. Speaker, I'm, I'm doing comparative analysis shows that we have been on decline, the budget of the National Assembly. In 2019, it was 1.42% of the entire budget. In 2020, it was reduced to 1.18%. Mr. Speaker, are you aware that currently our budget has gone further down to 0.98%. It ought not to be so because it puts a burden on us to be able to oversight this trillion of uh, Naira. There is no amount of money that is enough for us to be able to push through and get the job done. We need Nigerian government to reconsider that the National Assembly needs money to get our oversight function done. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.